Barbarian Queen is a 1985 action-adventure film from director Hector Oliveira. The movie opens with Taramis getting some flowers for her sister's wedding. Since this is a Corman fantasy film, she gets abducted and raped. These films always seem to have at least one, so I guess they're just getting it out of the way early? Is that the lead singer a seether? Over in a local village, they're preparing for the wedding. Ah, uh, here we see what they'll be feeding the cast and crew. Just then, Prince Argon arrives. The groom, Prince Argon! Who said that? Sounds like he's being announced as a game show contestant. Oh, this ADR is hilarious. Nearby, the bride is taking a co-op bath. Estrild goes looking for Terranus, but the bad guys are taking her away. The wedding's about to begin. The priest goes in to get the bride, but arrow to the face! The bad guys attack. This begins the flailing and tumbling segment of the program. Take this! The bad guys are all in black with their faces covered, so they can keep reusing the same five actors over and over. They try to get Amethia and Tiniara, but the women fight back. Amethia gives this guy a free prostate exam. They chase her into a hut, so she decides the best thing to do is to set it on fire? Man, with all that Aquanet, this village is going to go up like a fireworks factory. Well, that seems to have worked. Ah, uh, the place is on fire. Guess the fun's over. The village puts up a valiant fight, but are simply outnumbered. They line up the survivors and take them prisoner. Estrild arrives back at the village and finds Amethia still alive. Good thing she hid under this pile of debris. I guess small pieces of wood aren't flammable. Amethia isn't happy. Today was my wedding day. Now the only thing I have left is what might have been. I'm going to get it back. Hell hath no fury like a bridezilla scorned. The girls run into Tiniara. After a light lunch, they head out on their quest for revenge. They happen upon one of the evil guy's outposts. It's ambush time! This effect looks awesome from the front, but not so great from the side. This is a pretty impressive stunt. Amethia fights the henchman and... Um... Use the pointy part! The girls fight and aside from some overused quick cutting, the choreography is pretty good. Winnie Cooper is pissed! After killing the goons, the girls search the huts and find Amethia's sister, Taramis. Well, you took your dear sweet time in rescuing me. Taramis isn't all there anymore. I bet all our friends at the village must be wondering where we are. Amethia lets them know she means business. I'll be no man's slave and no man's whore. And if I can't kill them all by the gods, they'll know I've tried. That night, they gather around the campfire. Uh, no. Maybe one of you should stay up and keep watch? Otherwise, those thieving gnomes are going to show up and steal your loot! The next day, they're stopped by some local villagers. No one who rides for the kingdom rides through here. We ride against it, you fool! Aw, oh, snap! The villagers tell them the evil guys raided them too. So they decide to join forces. The villagers loan them this kid who can help them get into the city. On the way there, they run into some bad guys. The kid goes over to speak to them. It's a little girl. It's a little girl. It is? I thought that was Matthew Lawrence. Isn't that fair? Since the bad guys have some sort of code of ethics, they let the kid go. Oh, you. They make their way into another village to rest. Inside the catacombs is a secret passage into the city. They meet with the leader of the village people. They put on some disguises and sneak into the city. Super evil bad guy arrives with all the prisoners from the villages. Amethia sees Argon in the arena. Oh, Argon, take me away. Taramis is cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs and gives herself back to the evil king. Estrild goes after her and oh no. The bad guys have Estrild, so Amethia goes on the attack. Yeah, they're going to show these guys who's boss. And, oh, they all get captured. Uh, so much for girl bossing. So the evil guy is Arakur. He goes to see Amethia. Arakur is channeling his inner Harvey Weinstein. Let me see you. With your clothes off. That top is about three sizes too small. I'm sure every night she takes it off and just lets out a big, Ugh. He tries to take her by force, but she's a biter. He's not happy about this. I'm not here to torture you. Oh, this ADR. Tiniara fights off the bad guy. Yeah, she's gonna escape and oh, no. 
she seems to have broken her ketchup jar. Estrild is dropped off in the brothel, and it's debauchery central. She avoids all the sex and goes right for the chicken. I gotta say, she's a woman after my own heart. She gets interrupted by Mustache Guy. Well, we ought to get to know each other. Can't you see it's chicken time? She's saved by Argon, who wins the staring peck off. She tells him Amethia is still alive and mounting a rescue. I can't believe she survived. I can't either. I mean, that whole building burned down around her and she was fine. Back in the catacombs, oh, you can see where his arm is under that shirt. Daria convinces her father they need to join the girls in the fight against Ariker. Over in the torture chamber, uh, how do I explain this? A guy in a beanie hat and goofy glasses is using a metal finger to poke Amethea in the nipple. Argon talks to the other gladiators to get them to fight back against Aracor. Back in the torture chamber, he's not wearing pants up, no! Just then, she locks on and, oh <laughs> my heavens! Stop squeezing! Too tight! What's going on here is exactly what you think. Wow, uh, I guess this is another way to say, ladies, do your Kegel exercises. Now free, she pushes him into a vat of acid. Oh, why did I keep this open pail of acid right behind where I can easily fall into it? Estrild finally gets some chicken. This guy reminds me of someone. Don't eat too much. You'll spoil your appetite. Yeah. Yes! Estrild gets taken to see Ariker. This guy is wearing a floor mat as chest armor. Estrold kills the guard and escapes. She runs into Amethea. Ariker finds the torture guy. So, Acid didn't dissolve his hat? Estrild leads this guy into a trap. Oh, I walked right into that one! The next day, they get ready for the revolt. The one gladiator is a turncoat, and they're all captured. Amethea is about to be executed when... Okay, what? How did this little kid knock over two adults? Ah, whatever. Fight! Here come the farmers. Amethea goes to confront Ariker. Oh no, he's a much better fighter than me. This is going really bad. Taramis snaps out of it and gives Ariker a knife to the back. Yeah, they did it! The kingdom is freed. Now they can... Wait, what? That's it? Barbarian Queen is one of many sword and sandal films from Roger Corman. The movie was made as a spin-off of sorts of 1983's Deathstalker. In Deathstalker, Lana Clarkson played the warrior princess Kyra. She was a fan favorite, even though her character died in the movie. Seeing her popularity, they decided to try to put the actress at the head of her own franchise as a completely new character. They made Barbarian Queen 1 in 1985, and then they filmed Barbarian Queen 2 in 1988, but for whatever reason, it was shelved until 1992. They were planning on doing a Barbarian Queen 3, but that never happened. Most likely it was due to the lack of interest in sword and sandal movies. Lana Clarkson was a stunning actress. At six feet tall, she towered over many of her male counterparts. Roger Corman called her the original Xena. Clarkson also did all her own stunts. It's rumored that Clarkson's Kyra and Amethea were the inspiration for Tyrus Flair from Golden Axe. Sadly, Clarkson's life was tragically cut short when she was murdered by the piece of garbage Phil Spector in 2003. Taramis was played by Dawn Dunlap. You may remember her from Forbidden World. It seemed acting wasn't for her as she quit the industry right after this movie in 1985 and married the British billionaire Frank Lowe. Frank Zagarino played Argon. He started acting in 1983 with Baby It's You and Where the Boys Are 84. While he was a good guy here, he often plays villains in movies like the Project Shadow Chaser series. Estrold was played by Kat Shea. This was her first lead role, and one of her earliest jobs for Roger Corman. If you want to learn more about the actress, who later became a director, watch my video on Poison Ivy. Barbarian Queen was shot in Argentina in about two and a half months. Some locations are the same ones used in 1983's Deathstalker. Barbarian Queen is a lot of fun. It's badass when it needs to be, and they do make sure to go overboard on the female nudity. Amethea is an interesting hero because she's tough, but not perfect. She kicks ass, but also has her ass kicked more than once. It's interesting to see a flawed hero, 
who has to work for her victories, instead of just winning by default. Unfortunately, Barbarian Queen 2 is a sequel in name only. Although at the end of the day, if it's got ladies in loincloths kicking the hell out of evil warlords, I'm all for it.